G'day guys, in today's video tutorial we're going to have a look at data flow diagrams and how we can refine from a level 1 data flow diagram down into a level 2 data flow diagram. In the previous video we performed the opposite operation where we took a level 1 data flow diagram back to a level 0, otherwise known as a context diagram, but today we want to go add more detail. So we can do this process um, by looking at looking at a particular process in our data flow diagram and refining that down into sub-processes. This is certainly helpful with our top-down design methodology where we look at a project as a whole and we can refine it down into smaller processes and we can refine those processes down into even smaller processes. So let's jump across and have a look at our data flow diagram. So the data flow diagram that we've got here as we looked at in the last video is broken into three processes, so the enrol, examine and graduate, and we've got our two external entities here. What we want to have a look at is how we can refine the examine two process, which is down the bottom here. How can we refine this one down and add a bit more detail to it so we can further get closer to the stage where we're ready to start coding the solution. We can see coming into it is the test paper and leaving it is the results. So we'll be need to pay attention to those two and make sure we include them on our level 2 data flow diagram. So this is the solution that's being produced for it and we can see how it's broken down into four sub-processes. So the four sub-processes are print exam, exam timetable, exams occur and grade exams. In addition to that we can also see the numbering system that's being used, so 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, and 2.4. And the numbering system, while it's important and useful for us to keep track of it, it doesn't imply the order of processes. These processes can occur in any order. So if we go back to our level one data flow diagram, and we can see the test paper coming in and the results coming out, so we need to make sure that they're included on our level two. And we can see on the right hand side the results leaving our level two data flow diagram. And on the left hand side, the test paper coming into our level two data flow diagram. Now just like a level one data flow diagram, we need to describe the data that moves between the processes. So from our uh, data store, we can see courses clashing coming into the exam timetable exams process. And we can see that an exam timetable is being produced, being given to the exam occurs process. From the print exams, we can see the exam papers. From the exams occur, the completed exams are produced, and then the grade exams process looks after it and produces some results. And from our data store as well, we can see the course numbers being passed to the print exams. So we've taken that examine process that we saw back in our level one data flow diagram, examine two, just here, and we've broken that down and further refined that into a level two data flow diagram. Now, of course, we might say, okay, the processes that we've come up here don't add enough detail for us just yet. So we could go ahead and create a level three data flow diagram and further break down each one of these processes into their sub processes. So I like to think of it as zooming. So we might start with a map of Australia that gives us broad level detail. Certainly it might be like a context diagram. Then we could zoom down and get some information about the states, the major roads and the capital cities. So that's sort of like our level one. Then we might zoom in again down to a city level and that might be our level three where we're starting to see the streets and the highways and how they're all interconnected with each other. We could probably even zoom into a level four data flow diagram, but depending on the situation and the particular project that you're working on, it might be useful or it might not be. I'll see you in the next video.